welcome back to TPS. Every NFL team has a handful of moments that they wish they could have back. But the moments that hurt the most are the mistakes that a team commits that pretty much ends their shot at a hoisting Lombardi trophy. Here's a look at every team's worst play that probably cost them a Super Bowl. At TPS, we post videos every single day, so don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. Arizona Cardinals Kurt Warner's pick six to James Harrison. The Cardinals squared off against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 43, looking to bring home their first Lombardi trophy in franchise history. The Steelers dominated the first half, but the Cardinals weren't in position to take the lead before the end of the second quarter, or at the very least kick a field goal for the tie. But on first end goal, Kurt Warner threw a costly interception to James Harrison. Not only did it cost Arizona valuable points, but it gift wrapped seven for Pittsburgh. That's a 14 point oh, score. Done. Steelers show blitz. Here they come. He gets it. Harrison's still on his feet. Harrison is going to go all. The Steelers wound up winning the game by four points thanks to Santennial Holmes' tiptoe touchdown in the final seconds, so Warner's pick six was quite costly. Atlanta Falcons' Robert Alford drops game ceiling pick. There were a million things that went wrong during the Atlanta Falcons' epic Super Bowl 51 collapse against the New England Patriots. But even after the Matt Ryan strip sack, the costly holding penalty and the awful play calling, the Falcons still had a prime chance to put it all away with one defensive stop. During the game's game-tying drive, Tom Brady rifled a pass over the middle that was intended for Julian Edelman. Falcons corner Robert Alford, who recorded a pick six earlier in the game, had a game-sealing interception right in his hands. Instead, it turned into one of the most memorable catches in Super Bowl history. Here's Edelman broken up in the pack. Moments later, the Patriots tied it up, and they won it with a James White TD on the opening drive of overtime. Baltimore Ravens' Lee Evans costly drop in 2011 AFC Championship game. The Ravens were on the verge of putting the Patriots away in the 2011 AFC title game. Joe Flacco pieced together a marvelous drive, and his Ravens were on the cusp of booking a trip to the Super Bowl. Flacco threw a strike to Lee Evans in the end zone for what appeared to be the game's winning score, but the latter couldn't hold on. Two plays later, Billy Cundiff missed a game-tying field goal and the Patriots moved on. Buffalo Bills Scott Norwood wide right. This was an easy one. The Buffalo Bills were literally one play away from winning a Super Bowl and they blew it. It was Super Bowl 25. The Bills were trailing the New York Giants 20-19. They had the ball at their own 10-yard line with 2-19 remaining. But Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas marched them down the field, setting up a game-winning 47-yard field goal attempt with eight seconds remaining. All Scott Norwood would have to do was kick the ball through the uprights, and the Bills would be Super Bowl champions. But it wasn't meant to be. We wait. There's a snap. There's a kick. It is up. It is. No. This would mark the first of four straight Super Bowl losses for the Bills. Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton, let's fumble go. Newton won the 2015 NFL MVP after guiding Carolina to an impressive 15 1 record. The Panthers cruised to a Super Bowl 50 appearance where they met the stingy Denver Broncos defense. The Broncos got to Newton all game long, but he had one more chance to drive Carolina down the field for the win. With four minutes left, Newton was strip sacked by Vaughn Miller. The ball was right on the ground for the taking. Newton had a chance to jump on it, but he chose to just sit there and watch the Broncos recover the fumble. And Newton decides not to just dive in there and yeah, take back away from it. He, he jumped away. The Broncos will put the game away with a C.J. Anderson touchdown, while the Panthers continued their pursuit for the franchise's first Super Bowl. Chicago Bears' Rex Grossman's costly pick six. Super Bowl 41 featured the stingy Chicago Bears defense and Peyton Manning's Indianapolis Colts. Though Indy was a seven-point favorite, everyone knew this would be a tight game. The Bears only allowed 15.9 points per game during the regular season, after all. But this was a sloppy affair in the Miami rain, and neither offense could fully get into gear. With 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Rex Grossman looked to drive Chicago downfield for the lead. Instead, he threw a costly pick six to Calvin Hayden that essentially put the game away. Look out here, he's inside the 20, and Hayden may run it back all the way. He does! That was it for the Bears. They lost 29-17, and Manning captured his first Super Bowl. Cincinnati Bengals' Lewis Billups costly int drop. The Bengals met Joe Montana's San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 23, looking to capture their first Lombardi trophy in franchise history. 
The Bengals took a 13-6 lead into the fourth quarter, but the 49ers quickly drove downfield looking for a tie. Montana, who never threw an interception in four Super Bowl games, was nearly picked off by Lewis Billups in the end zone. Into the end zone! Offside, and Billups with good anticipation. No On the next play, Montana threw a touchdown to Jerry Rice that evened up things. The 49ers would later win the game in the final minute when Montana found John Taylor in the end zone to cap off a game-winning 92-yard drive. The Browns, the fumble. The Browns have a long history of heartbreak, but what they went through in the 80s stands out from the rest. From Red and Wright 88 to John Elway's drive in the 1986 AFC Championship game, Cleveland kept falling short of reaching the Super Bowl. The Browns had a chance at redemption when they visited Elway's Broncos in the 1987 AFC Championship game. This was the perfect opportunity for revenge. The Browns trailed by a touchdown with a minute to go, but they were on the cusp of a game-tying score that could have sent the game into overtime. They handed the ball off to running back Ernest Biner, who committed the ultimate no-no right near the goal line. Draw to Biner. Ernest Biner. Fumble. Fumble the ball. I think the sports fans are used to this stuff. Dallas Cowboys' Des Bryant didn't catch it. The Cowboys visited the rival Green Bay Packers in the 2014 NFC Divisional Round, looking to reach the conference championship game for the first time since 1995. The Cowboys trailed 26-21 with less than five minutes to go, and Tony Romo called for top receiver Des Bryant to make a big play. For a moment, it looked like Des had just done that. Fourth down and two. Here's one down the sideline. But as you remember, the officials conducted a review and made the controversial ruling. Bryant didn't complete the catch, and it was ruled an incomplete pass. I haven't seen anybody go up and make plays on balls in the air the way that Des Bryant has. Wow. Yes, it should have been ruled a catch, but oh, if Bryant just focused on maintaining possession instead of reaching for the goal line, the Cowboys could have won that game. And who knows, maybe they would have gone on to win the Super Bowl with that team. Denver Broncos, the Mile High Miracle. In their first season with Peyton Manning at the helm, the Broncos won 13 games to secure the top seed in the AFC. Denver was on the cusp of eliminating the Ravens in the 2012 AFC Divisional Round, which would have sent Ray Lewis into retirement without a second Super Bowl. All the defense had to do was not give up a miracle. But oh, they totally gave up a miracle. The Broncos would lose in overtime, and Baltimore went on to win Super Bowl 47. The Lions' Eric Kramer's fumble in 1991 NFC Championship. Hard to believe, but the Lions only have one playoff win in the Super Bowl era. That took place back in 91 when they defeated the Dallas Cowboys in the divisional round. Detroit visited the Washington Redskins in the 91 NFC Championship game, looking to reach their first Super Bowl in franchise history. But this game was a complete blowout, with the Redskins winning 41-10. The game was pretty much over after the very first play, when Eric Kramer fumbled and the Redskins recovered, setting up an early 7-0 lead for the home team. Back he goes, looking right, gets hit, knocked up in the air, ball is loose on the turf at the 10, scrambled, picked up, yes! Reds Little did anyone know that this would end up being the closest the Lions would come to a Super Bowl for the next 30 years. Green Bay Packers' Morgan Burnett goes down. The Packers led the Seattle Seahawks 19-7 with five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, Morgan seemingly iced the game when he picked off Russell Wilson, except he made the questionable decision to go down right away. Pay close attention and you'll see that he had a whole lot of field ahead of him. And oh, did we mention that there were five minutes left? Soldier on in this game that it's a 19-7 game and Russell Wilson gets why are you on the tip drill, but why would You know the rest. Seattle scores two late touchdowns thanks to a botched onside kick recovery by the Packers, and the game goes into overtime. Russell Wilson then finds Jermaine Kearse in the end zone to send Seattle to the Super Bowl. Houston Texans, the fake punt. The Texans stunned Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs by building up a 24-0 lead in the second quarter during the 2019 AFC Divisional Round. The Chiefs cut the deficit to 17 and forced the Texans to punt with eight and a half minutes to go, or so we thought. Bill O'Brien called for the Texans to run a fake punt in their own territory, and it didn't go so well. The fake punt turned out to be the ultimate turning point because KC took over from there with 41 unanswered points en route to a 51-31 victory. Had the Texans won, they would have hoisted the Titans in the AFC Championship the following week. They said they had to watch the Chiefs book their spot in Super Bowl 54. The Colts, 
Mike Vanderjack's costly miss. Top seed at Colt hoisted the Steelers in the 2005 AFC Divisional Round, but Pittsburgh's defense kept Peyton Manning's offensive machine in check, and the visitors carried a 21-3 lead into the fourth quarter. The Colts cut it down to a field goal, but after Manning turned it over on downs near his own end zone, the game was seemingly over. That was until Jerome Bettis fumbled near the goal line with a chance to win. Manning then drove the Colts into field goal range, and reliable kicker Mike Manderjack had a chance to send it into overtime. And it's no good! He missed it. Not even... Well, the Colts moved on from Vanderjack in the offseason, replacing him with Adam Vinatieri. Sure enough, the Colts went on to win Super Bowl 43 after making that change at kicker. Jacksonville Jaguars delay of game in 2018 AFC Championship game. The Jaguars had the heavily favored Patriots on the ropes in the 2018 AFC Championship game. Leading 14-3 before the two-minute warning, the Jaguars converted a huge third down in New England territory. Now they were threatening to make it 21-3 before half. Except... And they'll move Lee over to the other side. Just got this. Delay a game. Offense. The Jaguars are forced to punt, and the Patriots scored a touchdown before halftime. New England took over in the second half and route to a 24-20 victory, while Jacksonville watched their unlikely Super Bowl dreams come to a heartbreaking end. Kansas City Chiefs D Ford's offside penalty. The Chiefs defense didn't do much all day against Tom Brady and the Patriots during the 2018 AFC Championship game, but a fluky bounce gave Kansas City a game-sealing interception that would have sent them to the AFC Championship game. But ooh, just one problem. D Ford was somehow lined up offside to nullify the penalty. That would have pretty much wrapped it up for the Chiefs and said the Patriots won the game in overtime, and they'd beat the Rams two weeks later to capture the franchise's sixth Super Bowl title. Los Angeles Chargers' Marlon McCree's interception turns into a fumble. But Damian Thomason won the MVP award and the Chargers had the best record in the NFL at 14-2. This was supposed to be their year. They led New England by eight points with just over six minutes left in the 2006 AFC Divisional Round. The Chargers got a huge break when Marlon McCree picked off Tom Brady on fourth and down, except... Bettenheimer's hoping... You know, we've seen well, Troy Brown. It, it is a catch and then a fumble. The Patriots would go down the field to the game, and Steven Gostowski booted the game-winning field goal with just over a minute left. Same old Chargers. Los Angeles Rams, Jared Goff's costly Super Bowl interception. The Patriots let the Jared Goff help Rams offense to just three points through 55 minutes. But Los Angeles was on the verge of tying things up late, facing a second and 10 situation just outside the red zone. And that's when Goff made the awful decision to throw the ball into the waiting arms of Stephon Gilmore with no Rams receiver in sight. They're taking shots down the field now. Blitz to the end zone, and it's intercepted at the three yard. The Patriots melt the clock and ice the game on a Kaskowski field goal. Miami Dolphins' Pete Stoyanovich's miss in 1994 AFC Divisional Round. The Dolphins were on the verge of booking a trip to the 94 AFC Championship. Dan Marino pieced together a remarkable drive that gave kicker Pete Stoyanovich a golden chance to silence the San Diego Chargers in the AFC Divisional Round. But then this happened. The Chargers would upset the Steelers in the AFC title game before getting crushed by the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Minnesota Vikings' Brett Favre's interception. Favre's first season with the Vikings was a monumental success. He looked as good as ever, guiding Minnesota to 12 wins and a trip to the NFC Championship game. Favre traded blow for blow with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints, but it was number four who had his team on the verge of the Super Bowl. Favre was looking to give Ryan Longwell a more manageable game-winning field goal near the end of regulation. What could possibly go wrong? Favre sprints to his right, throws back. Intercepted! Porter! Favre never saw the ball again. The Saints won the coin toss and kicked a game-winning field goal on the opening drive of overtime. Probably should have just thrown the ball away there, Brett. New England Patriots' Wes Welker's Butterfingers. After losing Super Bowl 42 to the New York Giants, the Patriots had a shot at redemption just four years later at Super Bowl 46, leading 17-15 and facing a second and 11 just inside the 50-yard line with four minutes remaining. The Pats were looking to make it a two-score game and pretty much seal the victory. And it looked like they had gotten themselves on the cusp of doing just that when Tom Brady found a wide open Wes Welker at the G-Men 25-yard line. It's just too bad Wes Welker had a serious case of butterfingers on this occasion.
Rather than facing a first down just outside the red zone, the Pages were forced to punt the ball away a few plays later, and the Giants would take the ball all the way down the field for the game-winning score. If only Walker had just held on. Let's see what Giselle thinks. <laughs> New Orleans Saints Minneapolis Miracle No, we can't put the Nolan no call on here because that wasn't the fault of the Saints. But man, but man, the path was there for them as well just one year earlier. The Saints had to hold off a miracle against Case Keenum and the Minnesota Vikings in the 2017 Divisional Round. Keenum steps into it, passes, caught, digs, sideline, touchdown! No, we don't know why Marcus Williams ducked under Stephon Diggs. And we don't know why the Saints didn't have more guys back to tackle Diggs, but anyway. New York Giants botched field goal against 49ers The New York Giants held a 38-14 lead over the San Francisco 49ers in the 2002 NFC wildcard round, but the 49ers stormed all the way back to take the lead. The Giants wouldn't go down quietly, however. They marched downfield for the chance to kick a game-winning field goal at the end of regulation. Bad snap. Allen couldn't get it down, and now he fires. Yes, the officials missed blatant pass interference on the Niners, but the Giants shouldn't have botched the snap and put it in the ref's hands in the first place. New York Jets, Doug Bryan's two field goal misses. The Jets were on the verge of upsetting the top seeded Steelers in the 2004 AFC Divisional Round. Was Ben Roethlisberger's dream rookie season really about to end with a one and done showing in the postseason? Jets kicker Doug Bryan missed a 47 yarder that would have put his team up by three at the two minute warning. A Roethlisberger interception gave Bryant another chance to play hero, however. This time it was only a 43-yarder. He missed it! The Steelers went on to win in overtime, and the Jets missed out on a chance to play the rival Patriots in the AFC title game. Oakland Raiders stuffed on third and one. You can blame the officials in the rule book all you want for the Raiders' brutal tuck rule loss to the Patriots in the 2001 AFC Divisional Round, but they had their chance to finish it. Leading by a field goal with over two minutes left, the Raiders needed a simple conversion on third and one to ice the game. Spoiler alert, they didn't get it. And Zach Crockett, it's Crockett straight ahead, and he is close. Ah, uh, he's short. Think about it, if the Raiders convert, John Gruden possibly wins a Super Bowl in Oakland and doesn't end up in Tampa, and maybe the Patriots dynasty never has happened. Philadelphia Eagles, Michael Vick's dream season ends on costly interception. The Eagles won the NFC East in 2010 thanks to a resurgent year from Michael Vick, and they seemed poised to make some real noise in the postseason. Vick's Eagles trailed the Packers 21-16 in the 2010 NFC wildcard round. Philly had plenty of time to reach the end zone for the game-winning score, but Vick forced a pass that had no chance. 42 ticks left, Vick for the end zone, it's picked! Tremont Williams ends the fun. What a brutal way for Vick's epic comeback season to end. The Steelers' Ben Roethlisberger is throwing to who? Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers had the chance to capture a third Lombardi trophy in just six years. They just had to get through Aaron Rodgers and the stingy Green Bay defense in Super Bowl 45. But Big Ben really put his team in the bind when he tried this unnecessary pass in the first quarter. Wallace picked off. Nick, Nick Collins on the return inside the 10. Leap. The Steelers wound up losing by six, so yeah. The 49ers, Roger Craig's fumble. The 49ers were looking to win an unprecedented third Super Bowl. Their next step was getting past the New York Giants in the 1990 NFC Championship game. Joe Montana was knocked out of the game after taking a hard hit from Leonard Marshall. Still, the 49ers had a 13-12 lead and just needed to kill some clock time to win the game. The 49ers handed the ball off to the always reliable running back Roger Craig, but this happened. The Giants drove downfield and they didn't blow this golden opportunity. And the kick is good. The G-Man went on to win the Super Bowl, but if Craig had held on, it could have been three straight for the Niners. Seahawks throwing it. This doesn't need an explanation. You're throwing the ball from half a yard out instead of handing the ball off to Beast Mode, aka Marshawn Lynch. Seriously, Pete Carroll? Play clock is five. With all due respect to the Patriots, there's no way they would have stopped Lynch at the half-yard line three times. Buccaneers, Adele Shepard can't hang on. 
The Buccaneers hosted the Washington Redskins in the 2005 NFC wildcard round, trailing by a touchdown with just over three minutes left. Chris Sims threw an apparent game-tying touchdown pass to Adele Shepard, but the latter simply couldn't hold on. Sims deep. Touchdown. You're being tackled. You come down with the ball. Washington forced a turnover on downs, and they were able to bleed the clock to escape with the big road win. Titans throwing it short of the goal line. The Titans trailed the Rams 23-16 with six seconds to go in Super Bowl 34. They were 10 yards away from the end zone and from overtime. Steve McNair had a clean pocket, but he made the decision to throw it well short of the goal line. And Kevin Dyson was tackled one yard short by Mike Jones, thus securing the Super Bowl for the Rams. It is caught by oh. Dyson. Can he get in? No, he cannot. In that situation, you've got to throw it into the end zone. The Redskins' Brian Mitchell's fumble. It was Dynasty versus Dynasty. Joe Gibbs' Washington Redskins met the 49ers in the 1992 NFC Divisional Round. There was only room for one winner in this heavyweight showdown. San Fran held a 17-13 lead in the fourth quarter, and Mark Rippon looked to drive Washington downfield for the go-ahead score. Except Rippon and Brian Mitchell picked the wrong time to botch a routine handoff. He's got the handle now. The 49ers held on for the victory, putting an end to the Joe Gibbs era. What do you think was the most costly play in your team's history? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe. You know, my articulators are gone, and I'm having my wisdom teeth pulled on Monday. So, whenever, whenever you see this video, they'll be out. I'd like this. So I won't be doing videos for, you know, a week or reading anything. I'm taking a little break to be high and crazy from the pills. We'll see you next time.